Yeah. Well, Dean, firstly, happy anniversary. Um, <laughs> year in charge, I forgot the cake, year in charge of, uh, of Brentford. Um, what's it been like, 12 months? Well, it's not such a happy anniversary because we got beat by Birmingham on Saturday, which was a big disappointment. But no, it's been, it's been a wonderful year. I mean, really enjoyable, um, interesting. It's a really interesting club. Uh, a lot of really good ideas. And, um, you know, I feel that we're progressing. Um, it feels like it's a better place to be around at the moment. People all pushing in the same direction. And, um, um, yeah, I, I can see big things for the football club. Mm. And, you know, I hope to remain a part of that and keep driving it on, making sure the players get better and, um, and uh, the results get better. And, you know, our dream is to get to the Premier League. Mm. For a football club to develop, you need sort of consistency, don't we? Mm. we? We see other places where it just doesn't happen. You know where there are changes. I've been one or two here, and you obviously came in after a manager had a very short spell. But you would argue for, from your own case that it takes a while to get your feet under the table. Then it takes a while to start implementing, and then the, I mean, your last job sort of proved that. Didn't it? You, you you can't do it overnight. No, I mean, you know, uh, we'll all have to consistency um, at, at all the football clubs across the country. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there's only eight or nine clubs who are successful each year. Um, you know, and uh, that's why he said Alex Ferguson was the best because he was so consistent over the years. And people would argue that he had the best players, but you've still got to get the best out of them. And that's our jobs as, as head coaches, as managers. And that's my job to get the best out of the players that we've got and make them consistent. Mm -hmm. um, our performances in general have been fairly consistent. Some of the results haven't been, and that's what we need to put right. Mm. Where does that come from, then? How do you sort of impose that? results coming from the performances? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very much on the training ground every day talking to the players about what they do away from here, what they do when they're here. And it's, I know it's often been said, but it's a 24-7 project for the players themselves. If they want to go and earn the riches that are in the Premier League, at the top of this game in this league, then they have to, you know, day in, day out, minute in, minute out, be the best they can be. And that's the way they will play. Is that, I mean, a word on professionalism, I suppose, is the word, isn't it? And coaches have to approach that. Players have to approach their career, which can be quite short, with a professional attitude, both what they do in the hour and a half you have them maybe on the training pitch, but what they do with the other 22 and a half hours in a day. Yeah, it's key. And, and football has changed an awful lot, you know. There's, there's still room for the social side of it. There has to be. You yeah. know, they have to get on, they have to have relationships with players, they have to be able to tell certain players when they're, they're not doing it and they expect better from them. So there's, a, there's an awful lot um, of that side of it that has to be done, but ultimately it's down to how much they want it and what they're willing to sacrifice. Because you look at all the top players in the game and you, you read quotes from them and they've all made sacrifices to be at the top of the game. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, it could have been a, such a different game if opportunities had been taken, and I know that's been said more than one occasion in, in recent weeks. What, what can you do as a coaching staff to try and ensure that actually opportunities, chances become goals? Well, we keep working on the making sure we get the opportunities first, because if they dry up, then that, that mm. is a problem. Um, but we're creating opportunities, just haven't taken them. And just some, sometimes it's a little bit of confidence in in front of goal and sometimes you need one to go off somebody's backside uh, just to give them a lift. Um, you know, we, we certainly haven't had the best of luck with penalties this season mm. either, you know, uh, conceded a couple in the last two games and not had one ourselves and, uh, you know, one of them wouldn't go amiss and, um, you know, hopefully that, that could be on Saturday. Um, but all, we, all you can do is just keep working hard and building confidence and, you know, players, you know, getting better technically. That C word, confident, mm. obviously, uh, just in case, um, is, 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 it's a sort of an, almost an imponderable, isn't it? How do, how do you make sure that people's confidence doesn't dip? Well, I mean, I spoke on Monday with the players. You know, um, I'm not a big one for long chats in the dressing room after the game. I think it's too emotional, period. And, you know, I can't change anything at that moment in time. And I need them players again the following game. And uh, I think the most important thing after the game is that you know I come and speak to the press. So uh, you know we spoke on Monday at length, and my whole feeling was that sometimes we can catastrophize defeats, um, and that 
then in itself will you know lead to a demise in, conf in confidence. So for me, it was very much talk about the positives of what we did in that game, uh, how we made you know um, a top four team at the moment, you know how we made their coaching staff come and apologise to us after the game for what they called daylight robbery. Their words, not mine. Um, you know, so told the players, showed them about the chances we created, how we created them. I thought tactically on the day we were better than them. Um, you know, and our physical stats proved that we was better than them in that sense as well. So we have to make sure that we keep doing that. If you do that, you'll get performances and then you'll get results. And you need to take that, therefore, into the next game against the Norwich City side, who are, maybe, having a little slide of confidence themselves. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think they've lost five on the spin and we've lost three on the spin. Um, you know, that certainly still doesn't make poor teams. You know, uh, I'm sure anybody who plays ourselves or Norwich know that they're going to be in for a tough game. Certainly, I've watched the games, uh, their, their last couple of games, you know, they've had a player sent off in the first minute at, at Queen's Park Rangers and they were very unfortunate to lose the game at Derby watching the game. So they've got very good players all over the pitch and uh, we will certainly need a, a performance in the magnitude of Birmingham City on Saturday if we're going to have a chance of winning the game. And they're, they're a club with maybe a weight of expectation on their shoulders because obviously recently relegated people saying that, you know, should be one of the favourites to, to be promoted straight back. Yeah, I mean, they have the the financial windfall of being in the mm. Premier League and and, uh, and coming down. So, you know, people will, remember rightly so, look at Newcastle United, Aston Villa and Norwich City with coming down from the Premier League and what it gives you financially and expect them to, to bounce straight back. They've hit a blip, um, a bit like ourselves, but it doesn't take an awful lot to get out of that blip. And, um, you know, we've got to make sure that it, it's down to us and what we do to make sure it's, you know, us who comes out of the blip rather than them. And, and last week, obviously, you changed things around tactically. You're not going to tell me what your team's going to be for Saturday, but you were satisfied with what you saw as a potential system for games moving forward. I was really pleased with it. I thought it fitted really well with um, uh, our players. Uh, I thought they took to the task really well. And, you know, as much so that I thought Birmingham City struggled to cope with it, to be honest, and uh, um, they had to change their system um, a couple of times just to to try and counter what we were doing. Mm. Um, you know, it's certainly a system I like and I've used before, and um, I th certainly feel that the players have got a lot of confidence from that. So um, it, it's one that we can we can work with, that's for sure. And on the team news side for for this weekend, yeah, everybody's uh, everybody who's available last week is still available. Um, Sam Saunders and and Callum. Um, Elder have been training with us as well um, the game will probably come too quickly for Callum because he's not played <coughs> uh, for a while so um, it's nice to have them players back as well mm.